Alpha and Omega. You have no beginning. You have no end. Before the foundation of the world, you chose me. Adopted as your child through your son, Jesus Christ. I deserve death. Yet you showed me grace. I deserve your wrath. Yet you demonstrate love. My God, this whole world may fail, but you remain the same. The love of an everlasting God is my firm foundation. Whom shall I fear? Everything here on earth will fade away, but your promises will never. The love of an everlasting God is my hope. No one can take it away. I am yours, my Lord. You chose me, my everlasting God. <clears throat> greetings, brothers and sisters. Greetings, brothers and sisters. I pray all is well. Um, um, I pray that the grace of our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus have been strengthened your court to his will and his purpose. Uh, most importantly, I pray that you know that our Lord is faithful and that he's coming soon. Um, brothers and sisters, I have a word for you today. Um, but before we get into the word of the Lord today, let us pray so our heart to get into a place to receive all that the Lord has to pray to us today, okay? So without further ado, let's pray. Um, dear Heavenly and Wise Father, we repent of our sins. Please forgive us for our sin. We come for your throne. Um, Lord, we thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your sacrifice. Lord, we thank you for your faces, for your faithfulness. We thank you for your presence right now, Lord. Um, Lord, we pray that your presence will consume our hearts, consume our minds, Lord. Speak freely, Holy Spirit. Have your way that we may know you, that we may seek you, and that we may understand what you're saying to us in this hour. Lord, dive deep into our heart today, Lord. Speak freely as you will, Lord. Say anything you want to say. We need a word from heaven, Lord. We're desperate for your love. We're desperate for your truth. We're desperate, Lord, to be and encounter your presence, Lord. Lord, help us and Holy Spirit have your way. We welcome you. Speak freely. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Okay. Uh, well, brothers and sisters, let's get into this word, okay? Brothers and sisters, in this life, um, there's many things that we cling to, okay? In this life, there's many things that we cling to, okay? And a lot of things that we cling to, we look, we take seriously in this life, uh, are the benefits, okay? okay? Uh, we go to work, we get a benefit package, and um, as we get our benefit package and we get our health package, we do these things to make sure um, that uh, whenever there's a problem, whenever there's a situation, um, we are taken care of. Oh man so it's really safe to say that uh we deem benefit packages in this life as important oh. it's safe to say that in this life we deem benefit packages as important okay as we walk through this life we look at many different things to benefit if i do this can it benefit me that way if i do that can it benefit me that way if i take that trip if i take that job if i encounter that person if i come into a relationship with them will it benefit me or not oh man so in this life we associate different things to different priorities and can we benefit from them or not oh man and the truth of the matter is that sometimes we can build our life off benefits. Oh, man. The truth of the matter is sometimes we can build our life off benefits. Mm -hmm. okay. And depending on what that benefit is, depending on if we do it or not. Oh, depending on what that benefit is, depends on if we do it or not. Oh, man. And what we have to understand is there are good benefits and there are bad benefits, okay? There are good benefits and there are bad benefits, okay? And the truth of the matter is, depending on the posture of our heart, depending on what type of benefit we would choose. Oh. Depending on the posture of our heart depends on what type of benefit we would choose, whether it's good or whether it's bad, okay? For Jesus, Jesus has spoken. He said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So our heart is like a storage room. Mm -hmm. Our heart is like a storage room. We only can give what we have stored in our heart. So based upon what we have stored in our heart, 
that is the type of benefit we're going to choose. Okay? So if a man have evil stored up in his heart, then he's going to choose benefit that benefits evil. But if he have good stored up in the heart, he's going to choose benefit that are good, that it edifies life. And the Lord Jesus said, speak this to my children. The title of this message is True Benefits, A Heart of Fire. The title of this message is True Benefit, A Heart of Fire. Brothers and sisters, the most important thing, the most important thing in our life is our relationship with God. Okay? The most important thing in our life, brothers and sisters, is indeed our relationship with God. Okay? Give me one second, brothers and sisters. The most in, the most important thing in our life, my brothers and sisters, is indeed our relationship with God. Okay? The most important thing in our life is our relationship with God. Okay? And, the, and the most important benefit package you will ever choose is eternal life. The most important benefit package you will ever choose is eternal life okay because the benefit package of this earth the benefit benefit package of this world will expire but the benefit package that come from God endures and lasts forever so what do we say the greatest benefit package you will ever choose is eternal life the greatest benefit package you will ever choose is eternal life brothers and sisters why? Because inter eternal life is a true benefit. <laughs> eternal life is a true benefit. Okay? Now, as I was spending time with the Lord, the Lord revealed it to me why it's important to have true benefits versus false benefits. Okay? Because right now, in this hour with the one world government and the hands of wicked men are trying to create a universal economy, a universal benefit, a, a universal benefit package that seems good that will bring, but it brings eternal damnation to your soul. Seem good on the forefront, but will lead to eternal damnation of your soul and the mark of the beast. Okay? So in this hour, we have to make sure we live by and for the true benefit instead of the false benefit, okay? And the true benefit is eternal life. Why? Jesus, when Jesus came the first time, Jesus said, John the Baptist, John the Baptist came in the wilderness and said, I baptize you with water, but there's one coming that will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. The most important part of our benefit that comes from heaven is it turns our heart into a, a blazing fire for the love of God. Oh, man. It turns us into a blazing fire for the love of God, by the love of God, through the love of God, that in all things we may live faithful to his testimony. Jesus, man. Okay? The whole point of our, the benefit of our salvation is it turns our heart from a place of death and bring it to a place of life that we will have a heart of fire through the benefit of our salvation. Okay? True benefit is our salvation. Okay? Whenever we get a new job, immediately we have a certain amount of time to fill out the uh, benefit package because if we miss that benefit package, then we miss the health insurance. We missed the thing because we did not fill out the benefit packing in the time that was given. Oh, man. Well, brother and sister, we are in that seven-year period leading up to the second coming of Christ Jesus, and there's a certain amount of time that you have to fill out the benefit package. Meaning, tomorrow is not promised. Today is the day of salvation, and salvation is the true benefit. Eternal life is the true benefit. Therefore, draw near to God Draw near to God while his hand is still in the earth. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Why? Because true benefit is eternal life. Okay? In this hour, brothers and sisters, this whole world is going into captivity through false benefit system. Okay? And many of global elites are using the crisis of COVID-19 to do it, to bring this world into pure globalism, to make people hope into a false benefit. Brothers and sisters, this current age, this current life that we in are a false benefit. This current form, this age, this world, and how everything operates is a false benefit because it is fading away. But the true benefit that comes from God lasts forever, and that benefit is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? 
Now, as I was spending time, as I was spending time with the Lord, the Lord spoke to me. He said, son, I want you to encounter the true benefit that comes from heaven that you may have a heart of fire. Why? Because in the book of Revelation, Jesus spoke about a lukewarm church. He said, because you are lukewarm, I'm going to spit you out of my mouth. That means God don't want someone that is lukewarm, but he desires someone that is on fire. Jesus. Okay. God does not desire someone that is cold or lukewarm. God desires someone that is on fire. Okay. And the, the greatest evidence that you're on fire from God is when you cherish eternal life more than anything in this life. The, the greatest evidence that you are on fire for God is when you cherish eternal life more than anything in this life. And the greatest way we can cherish eternal life is, being a, is, is by being the gospel by which eternal life came. And that gospel testimony is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Eh? Now, as I was spending time with the Lord, the Lord took me in the spirit and as he took me in the spirit, he showed me people offering a false benefit package, okay? And the man of God was in the vision. He was filled with the Holy Spirit. And if it was not for the Holy Spirit, he would have been given over to the benefit package of this world, okay? Okay. Now, the most important part about the benefit package in this vision that whenever you sign your, whenever, you, whenever you signed on to this benefit package, then it would be like you giving your soul away for the things of this world. Oh, man. Okay. Now, in the vision, the Lord, in the vision, the Lord was showing the man of God that a storm is coming. A storm is coming, and then right after he spoke that a storm is coming, there was a false benefit package waiting outside. Brothers and sisters, hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the uh, to the churches. There are strong delusions on this earth right now in America, Europe, Middle East, all around this world right now. Brothers and sisters, is a storm brewing, and it's called strong delusion. Okay? And this and this storm will overtake you if you do not love the truth and follow God from the heart. Okay? Because in this vision, okay, when the man of God said the storm was coming, immediately there was a benefit package next. Okay? The greatest crisis that is coming is the strong delusion that people will conform to the false the false benefit package of this life because they did not take the true benefit that came from heaven. Oh man. So what do we say? Brothers and sisters, in this hour, many will be deceived by their false benefit system. The only way to not be deceived is to have Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Okay? Okay? Our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus took me in the spirit and showed me what it would be like for the, with the false benefit pack, package of this world. And right now, that's why you see the whole world going into a global economy. You see this whole world going into a universal health care, a universal uh, economy, a universal benefit package. Why? Because after the next crisis, they're going to cause the whole world to be given over to this global economy out of deception. Okay? And many people will sign their soul away if they don't have Christ Jesus in their heart. Okay? Many people will give their soul away if they don't have Christ Jesus in their heart. Okay? Why? Because the only, the only true benefit is your relationship with God. Okay? The greatest benefit package you will ever have is not the one that is attached to your job. It was the one that was attached to the cross. Oh, man. The greatest benefit package is not the one that comes from your job, but it's the one that's stretched out on the cross. And that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Now, brothers and sisters, as, as in this vision, the Lord showed me the benefit package that would issue the world. And it will be because of money. The Lord said, the love of money is the root of all evil. Well, in this hour, the one world government is about to test this whole world with money. Okay? About to test this whole world with money. And if you love money, if money is an idol in your heart, then you will conform to the evil agenda what they're about to pour out. Okay? And the only person that will restrain you is the Holy Spirit. Okay? Church, in this hour, your own strength won't keep you. Only the Spirit of God will keep you. So what do we say, brothers and sisters? What do we say? Let us seek the benefit package, which is eternal life, that we will not seek the benefit package of this earth that lead to eternal death. Okay? Okay? Why? Because this is due to happen this soon. Okay? It's already at work, even in a few months, brothers and sisters. Watch how this whole world begin to go into a global economy. Especially moving forward after this next crisis. Watch what they're doing. Watch what happened. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches. Okay? And then next, the Lord Jesus, he had took me in the vision. He showed me, he showed me two couples with two wedding rings on. Okay? The first couple that had a wedding, the first couple that had a wedding ring on, 
they was not ashamed of Jesus. They was living a life of Romans, Romans 116. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it's the power of God unto salvation, first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles. Well, in this vision, the first couple had a wedding way gone. They was out in public. They was not afraid that they was living for Jesus. They was not afraid to testify of his name. Not only when they was in front of people, but they had great integrity Integrity when they was not in front of people. They live from God. They live for God. They live for Christ from the inside out. Okay? And the Lord was honorable. The Lord honored them in their vision. But the next couple that had their wedding ring on, they had so much flesh, they had so much fat covering their wing that they had to pull back their flesh to see their wedding ring. And then the Lord speak to me. He said, son, the two couples rep the two couples with two wedding rings represent two types of people. The first couple that was brave, that was uh, willing to show their, show their ring publicly, they was not ashamed of me, but they lived for my glory. The second couple where they fat covered the ring that they had to pull back, their flesh to see the ring was those that was ashamed of me. That in public, they would act like they would never know me, but behind closed doors, they would act like they love me. Oh, man. The Lord said, son, notice that they flesh had covered the ring. He said, son, they flesh covered the ring because they had become so fat off this world that they neglected their marriage toward me. He said, son, they had become so fat off this world that they neglected their marriage toward me. Well, the Lord Jesus in this vision was prophesying also in his seven-year period. That in this hour, everybody that is not genuinely in love with Jesus will become so fat off this world, will be so become so corrupt, uh, uh, be, become so corrupt because of their flesh that they will turn away from the truth that God has showed them. Oh man! So what do we say, church? Let us be the faithful bride, the bride that continuously consumed by His presence with a heart of fire, because we trust in the benefit that came from heaven and not the benefits that the one world government is given in this life. Why? Okay. Why? Because we seek a better country, which is eternal life. Okay. In this hour, they're giving many solutions, uh, stimulus, okay, universal health care, and all of these different things, brothers and sisters. There's gonna come a time that you have to op, op out of these things. Okay. 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 I know they're giving many things out right now, brothers and sisters. I have even received some myself, but do not let your heart get attached to it because they got a different agenda behind it. They're doing it to enslave this whole world into a global communist new world order that in all things you will take the mark in a few years. Okay? They're using COVID-19 to desensitize the world for the mark of the beast that is going to be revealed soon in a few years. Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the churches? Okay? The Lord showed me two types of people in this vision. The one that the one that was faithful endured. The one that was corrupt by the flesh turned away, meaning they conformed to the life that they was in and eventually took the mark of the beast, brothers and sisters. So what do we say? Let us anchor ourselves in the true benefit that come from heaven that we may live for a greater cause because we got a greater life abiding in us. Oh man. Let us live for the life of Christ because the life of Christ is a greater cause and it got a greater a, a, a greater reward than the false reward that they're about to pour out in this hour. Brothers and sisters, let us cherish the true benefit. In order for a benefit to be true, it has to come from God because everything that is good comes from God. But everything that comes from man is corrupt. Therefore, let us live and abide by the truth that comes from God. Okay? Hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church, brothers and sisters. Watch after this next crisis that is about to happen real soon. The next thing to happen on God prophetic time clock, Revelation 9, 14. Watch what happened next, brothers and sisters. Watch the false benefit system that they pour out. Watch how they try to deceive the world, brothers and sisters. And the only way for you not to be deceived is to have the true benefit that comes from God. And that benefit is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? okay? Why? brothers and sisters because those that live by Christ will walk in the, the holy garment of righteousness and be ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb in the kingdom of God okay? the Lord our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus took me in the spirit and I seen the whole church sitting at the table with Jesus okay the Lord took me in the spirit and I seen I seen the the marriage the, the marriage supper of the Lamb I see I seen the uh I see the Lord took me in the spirit and I seen the church the uh uh the whole church sitting at the table with Jesus he was feeding us and taking care of us the marriage supper of the Lamb okay he took me in the spirit and I seen the marriage supper of the Lamb he said son only the couple that was faithful to their marriage will sit at my table only only the couple that were faithful to their marriage will sit at the table well in order for us to be the bride that Christ desire, we must cherish him as the true benefit and not this current life that we're in. 
We must cherish him as the true benefit and not this current life that we are in. Why? Because Christ Jesus is the true benefit of heaven. Okay? Then next the Lord took me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. Okay? Then next the Lord took me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. Okay? And again, brothers and sisters, okay? Soon you're gonna soon a, a little bit later on, soon, soon you're gonna see the Jewish people begin to go publicly in regards to building their third temple. Okay? It's a lot of things due to happen in the seven year period that we are currently in, my brothers and sisters. Okay? Okay. So let's get ready because Christ Jesus is coming soon. Okay. So the Lord took me to Matthew chapter 6, verse 30. Okay. He took me to Matthew chapter 6. Verse 30, and this is what he said, okay? Give me one set, okay? Verse 25 said, Therefore I say to you, uh, I'm gonna start at verse 25. It said, um, I'm gonna start, actually, I'm gonna start at verse 22, okay? It said, verse 19, I'm sorry, do not lay up for yourselves church on earth where, where moth and, uh, where moth, I'm sorry, <laughs> um, don't lay up treasures. Sorry, the wind hit my pages. <laughs> Um, don't it said um, do not lay up do, do not lay up for yourselves do not lay up for yourselves treasure on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal but lay up for yourselves treasure in, but lay up for yourselves treasure in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys and where thieves do not break in and steal for where your treasure is your heart will be also okay where your treasure is your heart will be also okay Brothers and sisters, in this hour, let us treasure the things that come from heaven. Okay. Let us treasure the life that came from heaven, which is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay. In this hour, brothers and sisters, in this hour, our treasure have to be our relationship with God. In this hour, our treasure have to be our relationship with God. Not the things of this life, okay? but in this hour, our treasure have to be, be our relationship with God. Why? Because the life that comes from God is the true benefit of heaven. Okay? Okay? Jesus said, do not lay up treasure in this earth. In this hour, brothers and sisters, it's time to lay down the treasures of this life and pick up the treasures that come from heaven. <laughs> it's time for us to lay down the treasures that come from this life and pick up the treasures that come from heaven. And the way we pick up the treasures that come from heaven is by fully obeying the gospel through an intimate relationship with Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Okay? And then the Lord said, for where your treasure is, your heart will be also, okay? In this hour, this is a hour of testing for the bride, okay? In this hour, this is a hour of testing for the bride to see if we truly for God or we are not, okay? And in this hour, in this seven-year period, God is about to see where our treasure lies. He about to see where do we have our treasure. Because no matter what shape this world, no matter what persecution we go through, if we trust God and we really love him and believe we have a house in heaven, then no matter what we suffer, even if it costs our own life, we will not turn away because we treasure the life to come. Mm -mm -mm. Okay? And if we don't treasure the life to come, but we really treasure the things in this life, it's going to be revealed in this hour. Why? Because those that, tre those that say they follow Christ but really, really treasure the things of this life will conform to the one world government and sadly talk, take the mark of the beast. But those that really treasure Christ Jesus and want to be with him, they will suffer well because the spirit of God, the prince of peace will keep them in this hour because they're completely given over to their relationship with him. Jesus, man. Why is that important? Because this is the hour for you to be engulfed by the true benefit of heaven. Why? Brothers and sisters, this is time. Of this is the time to choose the true benefit so you can have a heart of fire in this hour. In this hour, it's time for you to choose true benefits so you can have a heart of fire in this hour. Because the heart of fire endures to the end. <laughs> but a heart that is not on fire perish in the end because they did not believe in the one and only son that God gave. And that son is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? And the Lord says to me, he said, the lamp of the, he said, the lamp of the body is the eye. If therefore your eye is good, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. If therefore light that is in you is darkness, how great is that darkness? Okay. That's why Jesus right now speaking to how we should live daily, but he also prophesying to the end time church. 
right? He's telling us about, he's telling us about, he's talking to, he's talking to us about the inward part of our heart, but also how we can become, become corrupt by the things that we see. Okay? He's dealing with our heart and how we can become, become corrupt by the things that we see. Why? Because Jesus said, only things that are in this world is the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Okay? And the greatest thing that will make our eye evil is when we lust after the things of this world. Okay? Why? Because when we lust after the things of this world, we be given over to the pride of this life. And in this hour, in this seven year period that we are in, man is exalting himself with pride. Therefore, church, if we look at everything we see and eat it up, then our heart will become corrupt and great will be the darkness in our heart because we're living by the things that we see instead of what we hear from God. Oh. It will be because we're living by the things that we see instead of what we hear from God. God said, walk by faith and not by sight. Faith come by hearing and hearing the word of God. So in this hour, we must watch and be sober. Meaning, we watch everything that is moving, everything that was that is happening, that was prophesied in the Bible over 2,000 years ago, allowing the Holy Spirit to reveal, reveal it to our heart. That as, it, as he revealed it to our heart, we will turn to his word in a deeper way because we can see everything that he said. Oh, man. And as we see everything he said, that means we trust in his word by faith because we believe it before we believed it before we seen it because we heard it from him. Jesus. And the way we hear from God is by the spirit of God. Okay? In this hour, the Holy Spirit is speaking to his church. But in this hour, we also have um, unclean spirit that is speaking as well. Okay? Jesus prophesying to us, be careful, by, be careful on what you see. Okay. Church, in this hour, let us watch and be sober. And the way we watch is not according to our own strength and our own wisdom, but the way we watch is according to the Spirit, anchoring ourselves in the Word of God. And as we look at the things that are happening, we line it up. We, we look at the Word of God so it can weed out the, so it can pull out the deception, so we can walk in truth by His name. And that name is Christ Jesus, our Lord and the Savior. So what do we say? Let us watch and be sober by hearing the word of God. Jesus, man. Let us watch and be sober by hearing the word of God because faith come by what we hear from him. Oh, man. Why? Because this is the hour to choose the true benefit and get a heart of fire. Because if not, you'll choose this false benefit that was lead to eternal damnation. Okay? And the lake of fire, eternal separation from God. Okay? Okay? True statement, brothers and sisters. Okay. The Lord of Jesus is speaking to us heavily. He see the right hand of the Father in heaven. And then the Lord said to him, he said, son, no one can serve two masters. Okay. For either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God in money. Okay. Remember at the beginning of the message, we talked about the two couple with two wedding rings. Okay. Those, those two couple with two wedding rings, they serve two different types of masters. The first couple that was faithful to their wedding, the first couple, the first couple that were faithful to God, they served God alone, only Christ alone. The Bible said, uh, wide is the road to destruction, but narrow is the road that leads to life. Only a few find it. Okay. The first couple that were faithful, they took a narrow road. They found the narrow road, which is Christ alone, and they didn't live no other type of way, even when it cost them their life. So they served the true master, the true benefit. But the couple that allowed their flesh to cover the ring, the ring they, live by the, they live by the master of this world, right? The lust of this life, okay? The money and the things of this life that corrupt our soul in unrighteousness. That is how they lived. And as a result, they fell away from the truth and were separated from God because they did not obtain the true benefit of heaven by being genuinely given over to a relationship with Jesus. Why is that important, brothers and sisters? Because this is the hour of his second coming. These are why a lot of these are the reason why a lot of these things are happening. Therefore, brothers and sisters, let us take serious our relationship with God. Jesus. As we see all of these things happen, as we see every word that God said come to pass right before our eyes in this seven year period, let us take serious our relationship because he takes it serious as well. Oh man. So what do we say, brothers and sisters? We cannot serve two masters. This is the hour of true benefit. This is the hour to choose the true benefit, which is Jesus, so that our heart can become fire for his glory and truly live from him no matter what it costs us. Why? Because we can't serve two masters. In this hour, in this seven-year period, brothers and sisters, okay, there's a true benefit and there's a false benefit. Those are two masters. Which one will you choose? Brothers and sisters, by the Holy Spirit speaking to us today, 
I highly advise all of us to choose the true benefit that come from heaven because that's going to give us eternal life. But the scheme that they got going on in this hour by the spirit of the Antichrist, brother and sister, will lead to eternal damnation. So what do we say? Let us glorify God in everything we do that we may truly live for his glory as a living sacrifice because that glory is worth giving our life for. Okay? Why? Because Satan is a defeated foe. Okay? He is defeated. We give him no glory. He get no credit. He's already defeated. He's just trying to deceive the world so they can be defeated with him. So what do we say, church? Let us walk in victory and not defeat because we got victory through Christ Jesus who loved us and sacrificed himself on the cross and washed us from our sin with his own blood. Okay? Okay. Then the next thing, the next thing the Lord, the next thing the Lord spoke to me was, spoke to me, he had me to uh, address the net zero thing, okay? He had me to address the net zero thing, okay? In this hour, you might hear one world globalist or even in America talking about climate change and getting to net zero, okay? okay? You might hear them talking about climate change, okay? And net zero, and it even is gonna move further after this next crisis, okay? And the Lord spoke to me, he said, son, net zero is, a, is, an, agenda, is an agenda of climate change for cities of this world to pledge allegiance to the global system of the one world government. <laughs> Our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus said, when you hear them talk about net zero with carbon emission because of climate change, you're really hearing them calling on cities of this world to be connected to a global agenda and pledge allegiance to this global agenda through a one world government system that they, be, that they may become global citizens and global cities and eventually worship the mark of the beast that will be revealed in a few years. So revealed in a few years soon, okay? So why is it important, church? So we can be sober and love the true benefit of heaven, who is Jesus, who are revealing these things before they happen because he wants us to succeed and enter his house forever. And the greatest way to enter is to obey the gospel. Why? Because in this hour, we can't live by our own strength, but we got to live by the strength that God supplies. In this hour, brothers and sisters, we cannot live by our own strength, but we got to live by only the strength that God supplies. And that strength is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. From the book of Philippians, Paul said, I know what it's like to have a lot. I know what it's like to have nothing. But I've learned the secret to it all. It is, I can do all things through Christ Jesus who give me strength. Therefore, in this hour, let not money be our strength. Let not jobs be our strength. Let not even our own wisdom be our strength. But, allow, but let us allow the grace of God, who is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, be our strength that we may not fail, but we may finish the good fight. Fight a good fight and keep the faith and finish the race that he has set before us through his salvation. Why? Because we long to be where he at. Oh, Why? Because we long to be where he at. Because where he at is far greater than anything in this life. Okay? Okay? So, brothers and sisters, let us not be oblivious to their schemes in this hour. Okay? Then next, the Lord took me to Isaiah chapter 54, verses 14. He took me to Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54, verses 14. And this is what he said. Okay? Isaiah chapter 54, verses 14. Give me one, one second, brothers and sisters. Okay. And this is what he said, okay. Verse, four, verse, verse 14. I'm going to start at verse uh, 10. It said, For the mountain shall depart and the hills be removed, but my kindness shall depart from you, uh, but, uh, but my kindness shall not depart from you, nor shall my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord who has mercy on you. Church, God give grace to the humble and have mercy on the humble. Therefore, as the destruction happened in this hour, let us walk humble before God that he may have mercy on us and give and, and we flow in his peace that he have supplied through his sacrifice. Why? Because he's promised his covenant shall not be removed, meaning everyone that is given over to the testimony of Christ Jesus shall have peace every day in their life, even when they face through trial. But also in this hour that we are currently in of great deception, our peace won't be removed. Our cov the covenant with God won't be removed because the testimony of Christ Jesus have consumed us and taken us to his glory because everything he interceded for us to the Father, keeping us through the blood of his sacrifice and everything that the Father have poured out through his son Jesus that in all things we may remain faithful and chosen. Okay? Why? Because Jesus come back for those who are faithful and chosen. Okay? Next, he said, verse 11, he said, Oh, you 
afflicted one, tossed with tempest, and not comforted. Behold, I will lay your stones with color with colorful gems, and lay your foundation with sapphires. Okay. Our Lord and the Savior took me in the spirit and showed me rubies. Excuse me. He took me in the spirit and showed me stones as sapphires, and it was beautiful. Okay. And every man that entered into his kingdom will have a great reward of eternal life and, and drink and be taken care of by the Lord forever. Okay? This is a promise to those who are faithful to his name. This present suffering that we will face in this seven year period church is nothing compared to the glory that is stored up for us. Our Lord and Savior Christ Jesus took me in the spirit and I seen beautiful stones that was mentioned in the book of Revelation. And those stones is the evidence of the house that he had built for us. If we remain with him, we will be there. Okay? All those who are afflicted will be comforted. Okay? Okay? So what do we say? Let our foundation be laid in Christ and not the things of this life. Jesus. Let our foundation be laid in Christ and not the things of this life because we are completely consumed with every word that he said because he's trustworthy. Oh, man. Okay? Verse 12 says, I will make your pinnacles of rubies, your gates of crystals, and your walls of precious stone. All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. In righteousness you shall be established, you shall be far from oppression, for you shall not fear, and from terror, for it shall not come near you. Brothers and sisters, after this seven year period, brothers and sisters, there will be no more wars. There will be no more terror for those who believe. Why? God will crush the oppressor. Okay? He will crush those who have inflicted those who are righteous to his name. He will take revenge upon all those. To, he will take revenge for those who persecuted his faithful ones. So what do we say? Let, in this hour, let us not take revenge in our own hands, but trust God to revenge, revenge, revenge all things for us. Let us just rejoice in his mercy. Jesus. Let us just rejoice in his mercy that we may completely be filled with the joy of his grace that in all things we may finish the race that he set before us because we endure it to the end if we stop breathing today but also at the end of this seven year period leading up to the second coming that we are currently in brothers and sisters okay okay verse 14 in righteousness we shall be established church in this hour god want to give us a heart of fire right now he's preparing the church for what we're going to face and in this hour he's bringing the church to repentance okay he bringing us our hearts into a place of obedience that our heart may be truly on fire for him. Why? So we may be established in righteousness. Oh. So we may be established in righteousness because only righteousness enter the kingdom of God. Okay. Only righteousness enter the kingdom of God and that righteousness in is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So what do we say? Let us obey the gospel that the gospel may establish our heart in righteousness through our salvation. That in all things we have obeyed the will of God. And that will is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Okay? Then the next the Lord took me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay? The next the Lord took me to 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay? So let me go to it real quick, brothers and sisters. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Okay, give me one second. If I can get if I can get that to get there in my Bible. <laughs> I'm trying to turn so fast. Okay. So one second. Second Corinthians chapter eleven. Okay. This what it's this is what it says. Read. It said, Now I praise you, brethren, that you remember remember me in all things and keeping the traditions just as delivered to them. Just as I delivered them to you. But I want you to know that. I want you to, but I want you to know that the head of every man is Christ and the head of woman is man and the head of Christ is God. Every man praying or prophesying have his head covered this under his head. Church in this hour, Christ Jesus is our Christ Jesus is our covering. Brothers and sisters in this hour, let us not dishonor our head by worshiping the things of this life. Jesus. Let us not dishonor our head by worshiping the things of this life and being consumed by the things around us. But let us honor our head by allowing him to cover us with his glory through the revelation of who he is that come by his spirit and have a faith in what he did on the cross. Okay? Why? Because the Lord is our covering. Okay? 
the covering the covering of God is our hedge of protection whenever we don't have the covering of God we don't have the hedge of protection and the true benefit that come from, come from God give us a head of a hedge of protection that in all things we may be free from deception free from corruption free from the things that will lead us astray and lead us into eternal death okay why because God desired for us to live and not die that's why he sent his son and that son is Christ Jesus our Lord and Savior okay why okay because the image of God that was revealed in Christ it's the glory of God that he's painting that picture of his glory in our heart that in all things we may be his children. Okay. The image of God, the physical image of God that is in Christ that gave us an example of his righteousness, how to live pleasing to the Father's heaven is painting his word deep into our heart, making us into his image of his character that in all things, brothers and sisters, we may know that which is true and the one who is true and that one is Christ Jesus. Our Lord and Savior. Why? Because Jesus is the true benefit. And God desired for us to have that package. Jesus is the true benefit. And God desired for us to have that package. The question is, what package will you choose? Will it be the false benefit of this life or the true benefit that come from heaven? Well, it depends, brothers and sisters. If we obey the gospel. Okay. okay. Next, the Lord took me to 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 2 through 6. Okay. He took me to 2 Kings chapter 23, verses 2 through 6. Okay. Give me one second, brothers and sisters. 23, verses 2 through 6. It said, it said uh, I'm going to start at verse 1. Uh, now the king sent them to gather all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem to him. The king went up to the house of the Lord with all the men of Judah and with him all of the inhabitants of Jerusalem. The priests and the prophets and all the people, both small and great, and he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant which had been found, which had been found in the house of the Lord. Then the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to follow the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimony and his statutes with all his heart and all his soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in the book. And all the people took took a stand for the covenant. Church in this hour Let us take a stand from the covenant That God has made with us And that covenant is The sacrifice of Christ Jesus let us, make a, let us take a stand for the covenant By living Righteously according to his will As a living sacrifice for his purpose Jesus. Let us make a stand for the covenant Meaning let us show that we truly believe In what he's done on the cross By taking a stand By being a living sacrifice for his purpose and his will Okay, Why? Because God love language is obedience. God love in this life, marriage couple have love language the way they want to feel love. And God love language is obedience. That's how he feel love. So when we obey him, he feel our love. Therefore, let us make a stand for the covenant that he have gave to his son, son, uh, son, Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior, by being obedient to everything his son said. Okay? And that son is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Okay? Now, next. Uh, the next, uh, let me keep reading. The Lord said, uh, "And the king commanded Hilkiah, the high priest, the priest of the second order, and the doorkeepers, to bring out the temple of the Lord and all the articles that was made for Baal and Asherah, and for all the hosts of heaven, and burn, burn them outside Jerusalem, outside Jerusalem in the fields of Kidron, and carried their ashes to Bethel. Then he removed the idol idolatrous priests whom the kings of Judah had ordained to burn in incense." on the high place in the city of Judah and in the places all around Jerusalem and those who burn incense to Baal to the sun to the moon and to constellation to all to all the host of heaven okay and he brought the wooden image for from the house of the Lord to the brook Kidron outside Jerusalem and burned it at the brook Kidron and grinded it to ashes and threw it ashes on the graves of the coming people brothers and sisters in this hour this is a hour to lay down our idols okay and this hour, uh, when we read just then in the second king, uh, it was a man destroyed all the idols of Baal. Okay, okay. One might say in this hour, I'm not worshiping Baal. Baal is an idol. And in this hour, there's many idols that we can have in our life. It could be a job, it could be a car, it could be a person. It's time to lay those idols down. Why? 
because the same idol that you that you sacrifice the same idol that you burn incense for they burnt physical incense then but the way the way we burn incense now is when you conform to this world okay when you conform to this earth when you conform to this world after God had revealed to you the truth, it's like burning. It's like burning incense to ill. It's like burning incense to bell. Why? Because you're living for the idols of this life, and this hour is trying to tear down those those altar, tear down those idols, and raise up as the kingdom of God that God had desired us to be, church. Okay, and this hour, it's time for us to tear down these idols in our heart, because in this hour, the one world government is resurrecting the idol right now. Okay. Behind the scene, they're creating they earn their own image for you to worship. Okay, the man of sin that will be that will come out uh, in the next in the, in a few years and stand in the third temple and exalt himself above everything in this life and claim to be God, which is false. Brothers and sisters, these are what the world is preparing for. Okay, these globalists are looking for a savior, and brothers and sisters, this is where we're headed. Why is it important? It's time for your heart to tear down those idols now, because if you don't tear down those idols now, brothers and sisters. The same idols that is in your heart now will be the same idols that make you conform to this one world government agenda. And not only just in the one world government, but what if you take your last breath today? What if you stop breathing tomorrow? Then it means we took our last breath worshiping idols. And no idol worshippers shall enter the kingdom of God. So what do we say? Let us tear down every, every idol in our life by being fully obedient to the gospel. And that gospel is the testimony of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Eh? Eh? Why, brothers and sisters? Because Jesus is indeed the true benefit package. Okay? Jesus is indeed the true benefit package. Question is, brothers and sisters, which one will you choose? Which one will I choose? Well, we just can't choose it with our lips, but we got to choose it with our life. Jesus. We just can't choose it with our lips, but we got to choose it with our life. And we do that. By living a lifestyle obedient to the gospel. Not that we are perfect, but the one who is perfect become perfect in our heart by manifesting his love in us that in all things we may remain in him and abide in him that bear fruit that wells up into the eternal wells up into eternal life, even our own soul, which is the greater fruit that enter eternal life. Brothers and sisters, I pray that this word was a blessing to you. I pray that it keep you, and I pray that it lead you into eternal life. Okay? Brothers and sisters, I pray that you heard what the Holy Spirit is saying to the church. King Jesus is coming soon a few years away. Hey, church, let us remember. It's time for us to repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And church, we're not waiting on the end time to get here. Because the end is now. The end of this church age. We're living in the end of the church age, brothers and sisters. We're coming to the end of the church age soon where Jesus will begin to descend from heaven. He will descend from heaven and reign for a thousand years. That's where we're a few years away from, brothers and sisters. The end is now. Choose the true benefit of heaven that you may reign with him because you was faithful and chosen. Okay? America, 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 repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, America. Judgment is on the land, America. And you're about to be humble severely for your sins against God, America. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. God's hand is stretched out on you, America. God's hand is stretched out on this world. Judgment is on this world. And Jesus is not pulling it back till his second coming. Brothers and sisters, I pray that this word was a blessing to you. And if you have not accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, repeat this word after me. Say, dear Lord, I repent of my sins. Please forgive me of my sins. Thank you for leading me to this place. Fill me up with your spirit. Teach me to walk in your ways. I put my trust in you for salvation. I believe that you sent your one and only son. That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and my risen Savior. Thank you for your grace and thank you for your mercy. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. 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 If you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. If you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you did the best thing you can ever do in your life. Now go get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Make sure in the name of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters, don't get baptized in any other name. Be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, the name of the Father, the name of the Son, the name of the Holy Spirit. Because the Godhead is revealed in Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Okay? Okay? So, brothers and sisters, uh, 
what should our mindset be? We should have, rather have nothing in this life and be with Jesus than to have everything in this life and miss Jesus. Okay? Because true success is not having an abundance of things in this life, but true success is being retrieved by the one who will receive you into life when he come. And that one is Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Because we can have all the things in this life, brothers and sisters, much success. Okay? But we can have all the degrees. But when he come, we don't go with him, then we was a failure. Because we did not fulfill our true duty, which is to live and obey Jesus from the heart in truth and the spirit. But when Jesus come, we go with him, then brothers and sisters, we was a smashing success. Because we fulfilled our true duty, which is to live and obey God from the heart in truth and the spirit. Okay? So brothers and sisters, remember Jesus loves us very much, even, even to the death on the cross. And if you have made a mistake and um and or you've been church hurt, uh, Jesus, Jesus have forgiven you if you have made a mistake. And if you have dealt with church hurt, it was not the church that hurt you. It was a man misrepresenting what the church should be, misrepresenting Christ that hurt you. Because God love you and he keep you and he don't hurt you. But he encouraged you in righteousness and truth and allow every circumstance to transform you to the Im image of his son so your soul can be saved. Okay? So what do we say? Forgive yourself. Come back to the Lord. His grace is for you. His grace will strengthen you and lead you to more obedience. Why? Because his grace was given not to for us to live in the type of way we want, but God's grace was given for us to live the way he wants. Okay? And that is righteousness in his son Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. So what do we say? Let God's grace be an instrumental tool in our life that leads to obedience, that pushes us in righteousness, that we may turn from all evil and corruption, because that is his desire. Okay? So Jesus love you. He forgive you. A wise man falls seven times. Get back up again. Get back up. He's waiting on you. Come home, says the Lord, God Almighty. Brothers and sisters, remember, Christ Jesus loves us, loves us so much, even, even to the death on the cross. See you next time, brothers and sisters. Love you. Goodbye.